Pinagpalang araw sa inyo mga kapatid. Pinagpalang araw sa inyo mga kapatid. Ako nga pala ang inyong seminaristang vlogger na si Brother John Marie nagmula sa diocese ng Imus sa seminaryo na mahal na Birhen del Pilar. Nakasalukuyan nag-aaral ng unang taon ng filosofiya sa San Carlos Seminary sa Archdiocese of Manila. Sa video ito, makikita natin ang iba't ibang pagbabago sa lipunan na naganap noong unang panahon o noong mga nagdaang taon. Ito yung tinatawag natin na Intellectual Revolution. Ano nga ba yung Intellectual Revolution? Ang Intellectual Revolution ay ginamit na termino noong panahon ng pre-Socratic period. Ano nga ba pag sinabi natin pre-Socratic period? Pre, ibig sabihin nito bago. Socratic, ito yung panahon ni Socrates at sa mga philosopher niya na influential niya. Kaya pre, bago, sina Socrates. Ang intellectual revolution ay meron ding tatlong katangian. Isa-isahin natin ang mga katangian na ito. Number one, the world is a natural whole or it is a supernatural forces do not make things happen. Number two, there is a natural order. Ito yung mga laws of nature, kagaya ng laws of, laws of inertia, laws of gravity, at iba't ibang uri ng mga laws sa nature. Number three, humans can discover those laws. At yan na nga, yan ang tatlong katangian ng intellectual revolution. Ngayon naman, iisa-isahin natin ng mga naka-influensya o sa mga pagbabagong nangyari doon. Meron tayong anim na major influences sa intellectual revolution. Una, ang Copernican Revolution. Pangalwa, ang Darwinian Revolution. Pangatlo, ang Freudian Revolution. Pangapat, ang Mesoamerican Civilization. Panglima, ang Asian Civilization. At panganim, ang Information Revolution. At ngayon, dadako tayo sa isang webinar kung saan mas ipapaliwanag ang iba't ibang pagbabago na nangyari sa ating lipunan sa pamagitan ng Copernican Revolution, Darwinian Revolution, Freudian Revolution, Mesoamerican Civilization, Asian Civilization, at Information Revolution. Ngayon, uunahin na natin ang Copernican Revolution. Sino nga ba ang tao sa likod ng Copernican Revolution? Ito ay walang iba kundi ang matematisya na si Nicholas Copernicus. Si Nicholas Copernicus ay pinanganak noong 1473 at namatay noong 1543. Siya ay isang astronomer na nagsabi ng heliocentric model of the universe. Ano nga ba yung heliocentric model of the universe? Ito ay sinasabi ang araw ang nasa gitna ng universe. Ganito ang itsura niyan. The sun is the center of the universe. Ngunit, bago pa, naman, bago pa man sabihin ni Nicholas Copernicus na ang araw ay nasa gitna ng universe, naniniwala na ang mga ta tao noon at ang simbahan kay Aristotle na geocentric model of the universe o earth ang nasa gitna ng universe. Dahil dito nagbigay ng buhay ang Diyos, dito binigyan ang buhay ang tao, ang hayop at ang kalikasan. Kaya ang simbahan noon ay naniniwala na Earth ang nasa gitna ng universe. Ngunit pagkatapos ng ilang panahon ay naniniwala na sila na heliocentric ang mundo. Dahil dito sa Red the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres na ginawa ni Nicholas Copernicus. Sunod naman ay kay Darwinian Revolution. Si Darwinian Revolution ay ang tao sa likod dito ay si Charles Darwin. Si Charles Darwin ay kilala bilang father of the evolution dahil sa kanyang theory of evolution. Darwin's theory of evolution is widely held notion that all living organisms are related and have descended from a common ancestor. Dito nakapaloob din ang tinatawag nating natural selection as random genetic mutations occur within an organism's genetic code the beneficial mutations are preserved because they aid survival. Ito nga yung tinatawag nating natural selection. At dahil din dito sa natural selection, sinasabi din na ang panahon noon ay survival of the fittest. Bakit? Kasi ito, ang, ito ay gagawin mo para maka-adapt ka sa environment na iyong kinabibilangan. 
sinabi nga kaya ay nag evolve ang isang bagay, ang isang tao, dahil nag adapt sila sa environment. At kapag sila ay nag adapt sa environment, sila ang mas maliligtas. Kaya kung hindi ka mag adapt matalo ka. Kaya ito'y tinatawag na survival of the fittest. Isang halimbawa noon ay sinasabing ang giraffe ay merong maliliit na leeg lamang. Ngunit dahil ang puno noon ay napakataas at hindi sila makakain dahil ang bunga ay nasa tuktok pa ng puno, gumawa sila ng paraan, nag sila at unti-unting humaba ang kanilang leeg. Pangatlo, ang Freudian Revolution. Ito ay simula ni Simon Freud at siya ay tinawag na father of the psychoanalysis and one of the most influential thinkers of 20th century. Siya ay nag, nag, nagbuo ng isang theory na tinatawag na Structural Theory of Personality. Freud's Structural Theory of Personality emphasizes the role of unconscious psychological conflicts in shaping behavior and personality. Human behavior is the result of the interactions among three component parts of the mind, the id, superego, and ego. First, what is id? Id is unconscious psychic energy that works to satisfy basic urges, needs, and desires. Ito yung sinasabi na, halimbawa, may isa kang bagay na nakitang gustong gusto mo at yung katabi mo ay may ganong bagay. Bigyan natin ng bagay. Kunyari, kumakain ng cake yung katabi mo at gusto mo ng cake. Ang gagawin mo dahil nga pinagana mo ang iyong id, kukunin mo ang cake para masatisfy ang iyong pangangailangan. Pangalawa, ang super ego. Composed of people's internalized ideas acquired from parents and society. Ito naman yung nagbabalance na sa id, kung sa id kukunin agad yung cake, sa super ego naman sasabihin niya na hindi, mali yan. Hindi dapat kunin yung cake at magtiis sa lamang na huwag kumain ng cake. Pangatlo naman ay ang ego. Mediates the demands of the id, the super ego, and the reality. Ito yung nagbabalance din sa id at super ego at sa realidad ng buhay. Halimbawa, yung katabi mo kumakain ng cake at gusto mo din ng cake, imbis na kurin mo o imbis na magtiis ka lang, ang gagawin mo ay bibili ka ng cake para masatisfy ang iyong pangangailangan. Sinasabi din ang Freud, ang, ang kanyang structural theory of personality ay parang may demonyo at may anghel sa ating paligid. Yung demonyo, yung id, yung anghel, yung super ego, at ikaw yung ego, kung paano mo gagawin yung tama at kung paano mo maihalin tulad sa realidad ng buhay. Pang-apat, Mesoamerican Civilization. Ito, ito ay nagmula sa iba't ibang region at cultural, er, cultural area sa Amerika, extending from approximately central Mexico to Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and northern Costa Rica was where, and was where pre-Columbian societies flourished before the Spanish, col uh, the Spanish colonization in the 15th and 16th centuries. Mesoamerican civilization contributed greatly in agriculture. As early as 7000 BC, the cultivation of cacao, corn, beans, tomato, squash, and chili as well as the domestication of turkey and dog made the transition from Paleo-Indian hunter-gatherer tribal grouping to the organization of sedentary agricultural village. The main food sources in Mesoamerica ay tinawag na three sisters. Ano nga ba yung mga three sisters ito? Ito ay ang beans, corns, and squash. Mesoamerican contributed also was known to first create the calendars. Example is the civil calendar or the hub. Ito yung itsura niya, the hub, the civil calendar. 18 months of 20 days each for a total of 30 days each per cycle. Next is Cholkin calendar. Consists of 20 months of 13 days each for 260 days in each Finnish cycle and was used primarily for ceremonial purposes. Next is the Asian civilization. The Asian civilization bore two of the world's great early civilizations, one from India and other from China. About 4,000 years ago, civilization arose in the Indus River Valley, 
People used weapons and utensils made of bronze and copper. Shops were also established around its major city, Mohenjo-Daro. In addition, the region served as birthplace of two world's known religious, namely Hinduism and Buddhism. Hinduism was based on the four sacred books called Vedas, which hold the records of ancient history and beliefs and were written by the Aryan people who invaded the region from the north around 1500 BCE. Under this religion, people were also divided based on a caste system where priests called Brahmans ranked highest and the untouchables as the lowest, as you see in the diagram. Next is the Buddhism. Buddhism embraces followers who praise Buddha or Siddhartha Gautama, a wanderer who believed that human greed and selfishness lead to human pain. Lastly is the information revolution. The information revolution was accompanied the history of mankind and began as early as 3000 BC. These were the uh, invention in the information revolution. First is the Gutenberg's invention of the printing press in 1455 and the work of Augusta and Babbage on analytic engine in the early 1830s and the first telephone by Galile Galileo Galilei on 1870s and the Turing's work during World War II. Now, uh, the work of Alan Turing was great influence in the information revolution. Alan Turing was born in 1912 and died in 1954. Um, the invention of Alan Turing called the Turing Test Machine. He also contributed the Turing Test concerning the possibility of developing conscious and thinking machines in artificial intelligence. The Turing Test is a test of machines' ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or distinguishable from that of a human. And that's all, the intellectual revolution that defined the society. The Copernican Revolution, the Darwinian Revolution, the Freudian Revolution, the Mesoamerican Civilization, the Asian Civilization, and lastly, the Information Revolution. Ayan, natutunan at nakita natin ang mga iba't ibang pagbabago na nangyari sa ating lipunan. Paano ba natin maihahalalin tulad itong mga pagbabago na nangyari sa ating pananampalataya. Maaaring madaming pagbabago ang nangyayari sa simbahan, sa ating pananampalataya, pero nawa ang pagbabago na yon ay ang pagbabago para mas mapatibay pa ang ating pananampalataya sa Diyos. Ngunit pagdating sa ating pananampalataya, magbago upang mas mapatibay pa ito. Maraming salamat po.